Hi, welcome to the next of our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. Today we're going to cover something called the Biot-Savart Law, which is named after the Frenchman who discovered it, but you can essentially think of it as the law that tells us how current elements create a magnetic field. And we're going to explore the idea of superposition that we saw with electric fields and see that it actually applies to magnetic fields. And if you're in my class, you can go ahead and follow along with this reading in section 5.2 of the textbook. Okay, so we learned last time that, that current elements that create magnetic fields and they act very much like charges did when we were talking about electric fields. And this is really the core idea of what we're talking about here. That if you have a wire and think of a very, very slice, tiny slice of current moving through that wire, and we're going to call this essentially I naught, the amount of the current times the length, and we're going to say there's essentially a very small vector, uh, dl that points in the direction that's moving that this current element plays exactly the same role in creating a magnetic field that the charge did in creating electric fields remember charges generated electric fields it turns out that current elements very tiny little pieces of current moving in a particular direction are the things that generates magnetic fields the biot-savart law essentially tells you that this expression right here tells you what the tiny little piece of magnetic field dh is that's created by the current element i naught dl and essentially that magnetic field goes in a loop around the wire and we determine the value of the magnetic field at any sort of little point in space so we've got a little piece dh right there and remember we can relate b and h by the permeability that that little piece of the magnetic field is given by the dot the cross product excuse me of idl crossed with the position in space that the vector is divided by 4 pi times the magnitude of the vector cubed now we'll see this expression in more detail on the next slide but I want to point out that it's very very similar to Coulomb's law except all we did was replace the charge with that term right there so let's look at this Biot-Savar law in more detail we can really understand the various pieces of it essentially we have a coordinate system with an X a Y and a Z axis with the origin right here and remember it doesn't really matter that much where we put the origin of our coordinate system or how we rotate the coordinate axes because of this translational and rotational symmetry of any coordinate axis system but we're gonna say we have some little tiny element of current we call it I naught DL um, and we're gonna have it at the point in space that's located by the vector R sub I I for current we want to know what the magnetic field is at some other point in space r sub m and again we're doing a very sort of general expression for the Biot-Savart law because you can always simplify it later to be easier things as we did with electrostatics and of course we know the vector r m minus r sub i points from the current element out to the point that we're measuring so this expression is that vector right there and so overall the little tiny piece of the magnetic field at this point in space is given by this expression right here where the 4 pi on the bottom comes in for the usual reason and also we have the magnitude of the vector that points from the current element out to the point we're measuring cubed very very similar to Coulomb's law as we would expect because as we've seen really the magnetic field which is created by current elements rather than charges is simply the electric field in the case of special relativity so there's no reason we wouldn't expect it to behave the same however that behavior is of course not perfectly analogous because it turns out that the magnetic field from a current element which I've graphed here using the MATLAB code I've expressed right down there doesn't go out away like it did from a charge it goes around the current element and I naught DL in this case is out of the screen it's pointing right at you because if you take your right hand point your thumb out of the screen you'll see your fingers wrap in this direction which the magnetic field is pointing in so again compared to charges we're not having things that go out but things that go around and it is really a three-dimensional problem because that current element is coming right out of the board
just as with electric fields, if you want to know the overall magnetic field um, everywhere in space, you use this equation. But if you have essentially a wire that's a distributed current, a lot of little current elements strung end to end, um, you have to sum up all the magnetic fields from each of those current elements, just as we had to do with the charges. Um, and the way we sum things up, remember, is we do an integral. So to find the overall magnetic field, for a wire or a whole bunch of little current elements, you have to sum all of them up, and you come up with an expression that looks like this. Um, pretty straightforward integral. Um, if you have a surface current, you have to do the two-dimensional sum and sum over the complete surface. And most generally, when you have a current flowing through a volume, if you want to calculate the overall magnetic field of currents flowing through a volume, you have to do this triple integral over each little tiny cube in space. But you should be familiar with this, because essentially this is exactly what we did in the case of the electric field, except instead of charge, essentially we've got the cross product of either the little current element in a wire, the surface current that has a direction, or the volume current that has a direction right there. Now I'll point out, while this is really easy to say and really easy for me to talk about, it's not that easy to do if you actually have to solve this thing analytically or do a homework problem for the following reason. Remember, one of our, our laws or rules for dealing with cross products was the cross product of the sum of two vectors is just equal to the cross product of the first vector plus the cross product of the second vector. And so essentially, if you look at the general expression here, where you have essentially a cross product and the difference of two vectors, this one integral right here is going to basically be broken out into two integrals. So in other words, this integral expression right here is essentially going to be two integrals. The integral of this and this minus the integral of this and this. But don't worry, it actually gets worse than that, because remember when we write out our full expression for the cross product, every one of these li little integrals gets expanded out into six separate terms, a positive and negative term for x, a positive and negative term for y, and a positive and negative term for z. So instead of two integrals, since each of those integrals gets expanded as six separate components, in order to solve a general problem, you've actually got to solve 12 different integral expressions. In most cases, things average out to zero and, and things copy. But this, this is actually an important point. This type of really shorthand notation that you'll see in your textbook um, ends up being huge if you write it out longhand on a homework problem or a piece of paper. There's a lot of integration that goes on with doing these types of superposition problems. And that's why the, the problems you're given in your book are very, very highly simplified. And the general problem, in the most general case, they're usually not solvable analytically, and we have to do it numerically. But let's not get hung up on how difficult the math is, because the math really for engineers is just a tool to help us design the things we want to design. Um, really what I'd like to do here is do sort of a comparison of the electric field on one side and the magnetic field on the other side. Remember, in the electric field we have some charge Q that's a point charge. It's essentially a scalar quantity. And it puts electric fields out in all directions. And it's going to be in three dimensions, but I can only really show the way those, those electric fields go out in the plane. We know that the force of another charge is equal to the electric field times that other charge. And it's always going to be away because those arrows push away. And we can essentially calculate the electric field with Coulomb's law, then use superposition of a bunch of little charges to calculate the electric field generally. For the magnetic field, H, which we can equivalently represent by multiplying it by a permeability mu and setting it equal to the magnetic flux vector, B, um, our generating element is not a charge, but is essentially a little current. We call it I dl. In this case, it's pointing out of the screen at you, and it's a vector quantity, not a scalar quantity. It creates a vector field that goes around the wire, and we use the right-hand rule to determine it. The force that another current element is going to feel is essentially going to be the current element cross product with the B field that's created by our first current element here. So this current element creates that B field. A second current element, if we were to say put it that way or put it that way, would feel a force given by this expression. We can calculate the overall magnetic field by summing up each little component 
of the magnetic field, which is given by the Bios of Art law here. Again, we've got cross products, but again, because the magnetic field derives from the electric field in the case of relativity, it's just superposition one more time. And even though the integrals are co complicated, we can essentially solve in many cases for what the magnetic field is going to be. Main point, electric fields, magnetic fields, very similar. The math is different. The swirliness is different as opposed to the pushing outward. But there's a lot of analogy because both of these fields really ar arise from the same 